6K Pro already had Gen 5. The update was for uh, screen white balance and tint control on the 6K Pro. If you're shooting in Blackmagic RAW, why would why would even transcode to ProRes? In Premiere, you could switch from Gen 4 to Gen to 5 without transcoding anything. Resolve was also the same too. If you're using Blackmagic cameras, you should be shooting in B-RAW anyways. <laughs> uh, Whoops. What is up fellow procrastinators? I'm Flamecom. So in the previous video, uh, in my video about Blackmagic camera 7.3 update releasing, uh, there's a slight correction that I have to make around, uh, I'd say 1 minute 16. In that, I said that uh, before if you wanted to use Gen 5 colors, you'd have to transcode B-Raw to ProRes and then add a few hundred more gigabytes of footage into your workflow. Uh, yeah, at that moment I had like a brain fart and thought I already said the words like Final Cut. Yes, so what I meant to say in that bit was if you're a Final Cut user and you wanted to access the Gen 5 colors, you would have to shoot in B-Raw, go into Resolve to, uh, to toggle Gen 4 to Gen 5 and then export individual clips and then bring that back into Final Cut Pro and then edit and grade as you would. And yes, if you were a Premiere user with the Blackmagic RAW plugin or you were a Resolve user, you just toggle that Gen 4 to Gen 5 and then you edit and grade like normal. So apologies, governor. Yeah, I meant Final Cut users. And that sort of gave me the idea for this video, which is how would you edit B-roll videos in Final Cut Pro? Well, unfortunately, that's a tiny bit of a clickbaity title because the short answer is you can't but the long roundabout answer is that uh, technically you can make it such that you can access what was filmed and yes roundabout is the key word in all this and what I sort of alluded to before pretty much sums up the whole process but how do you actually do it well let's jump over to OBS version of myself and then uh, I will talk you through it gluten tag my fellow procrastinators here we are in uh, DaVinci Resolve uh, yeah so let's let's just get stuck into it so yeah here are all my b-roll videos and all that yeah um, so just like select them all so say for example on your project the um, cam up recorded everything in, Bla in Blackmagic RAW, but then the editor, for some strange reason, is a Final Cut user. You know, everyone would have access to the free version of DaVinci Resolve, so there's no excuse for why they cannot do this. Either that or, you know, just convert to DaVinci Resolve, which I think is the better option. But anyways, <laughs> that was a weird rant. Anyways, yes, go into here. So yes, you have all your... You have all your stuff and things, you know. What you then do is you go into the color page. Actually, I should icons and labels yep you go into the color page or shift 6 uh, you click on that you then go over here to the bottom left you click on project you, you say decode using project you click on that and then select clip before the 7.3 update this would have said gen 4 the gen 4 colors look you know more more saturated more contrasty it would have been like this but now control so control C and then control A to select all and then just go control V to make sure all of them are in Gen 5. But once again with the 7.3 update, it defaults to Gen 5 in Blackmagic Raw and ProRes. And then yeah, just like um, you know, uh turn highlight recovery on if need be. So if you know you've got like clouds and all that that's clipping. Yeah, just go into each of them and like uh select the desired ISO and whatever and you could even like if you wanted to grade like within DaVinci rather than grade within Final Cut Pro like let's say for example you want ISO 800 for that the better highlight roll off I had someone in the comments asking me how did I retain the sort of highlights well I do sort of what's called like a reverse S curve so instead of like raising the highlights you sort of like do like that way so the overall image is like less contrasty but um, you get to keep your highlight go over to the deliver tab or shift 8 and here you have to go into the top left and you click on individual clips uh, and then in the video tab uh, select quick time go codec and then in if you were on uh, on like an iMac then you would have the ProRes option but since I'm on Windows I do not have that option but I would just 
click on to the next best thing, which is a uh, DNXHR. Um, I'll just choose like that. These ones, they really, really lag my computer. So I'll just like do this one. I have this enabled, render at source resolution. So yeah, make sure to do that. Um, yeah, sure, keep that on. Um, blah, 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 scroll down. Uh, I think if you were on like a, a, a Apple computer, then you have to click on this and then you go, I think like gamma 2.4 or something strange like that. I don't know. It's a, it's an Apple thing where the export looks all funky and like the contrast is all gone and it's like all desaturated and whatever. Um, yeah, I like having this on a force sizing to highest quality. Uh, but it's purely optional. So I'll just click that off. Uh, yeah, nothing there. Uh, audio, AAC, linear PCM, you know, you do you. On the file bit, go go to file and then go uh, file name users source name. So you do that. If you're having to move from this computer over to like your Apple MacBook or iMac or whatever, then export to an external hard drive. But if you're still on the same computer, then uh, just, you know, export to wherever on the same computer or on the same drive or whatever, wherever your uh, project folder is. And uh, yeah, add to render queue and uh, go, yeah, just like select and go render, render one. It's like a similar thing if you go, if you want to do that, like a XML round trip workflow. Final, like um, DaVinci Resolve, I keep saying Final Cut Pro. DaVinci Resolve, when you export XML, it also in like exports each cut here, each cut here and all the timing and everything of it, like uh, as its own .mov file with all the color grading baked in. And then you go in back into uh, Premiere here or Final Cut Pro X. Uh, you go like uh, import XML, and uh, yeah, it, it, for some reason, uh, Final Cut Pro, I have to go like file, relink files and something before it recognizes where all the linked media is. And then, and then yeah, Pre Premiere, you also go import XML into timeline, whatever. All the timing of the cuts will be in the timeline. Yeah, as, as either DNxHR or ProRes. That's also like an like an additional thing they do. They like, on top of exporting each individual clips, as you can see here, they also export the dot xml file for either final cut pro or premiere yeah i guess so in the meantime get your apple computer ready oh yeah actually uh i must emphasize for all these like anamorphic like 2.8k uh footages yeah, it's 2 two twenty eight eighty by 2160 and if you go into clip attributes the pixel aspect ratio is like at 1.8, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Yeah, it's like, it's, it gets a bit confusing, like whether to go like in the deliver tab, whether to go square or cinema scope, whatever. Yeah, see? Okay, so because um, I selected the square rather than cinema scope, all the videos are actually, it's actually 2880 by 2160, and it hasn't got that, um, that cinema scope pixel ratio turned on to yeah so it doesn't it's not stretching out horizontally so in Final Cut Pro you'll still have to stretch it out by the two times or 1.8 times on the X axis in the transform tool okay let's jump over to uh, my MacBook but actually no well before that I have to copy everything onto the hard drive and then go into my MacBook so I'm here on my on my craptastic MacBook now, which hey, I mean, credit where credit's due. I uh, I got in, uh, many many years of work out of it, and uh, yeah, here you go. I copied and pasted all my stuff into a folder called Transcoded, you know, just so to be as unambiguous as possible. See, they are all they are all .mov files. Yep, go Command I, and uh, as you can see, it says David DNxHR. Yay! And hey, that it works in Final Cut Pro. Label that as videos. Videos, audio, uh, project. Yep, go into videos. Uh, yep, so there's that. And uh, yeah, click and drag them in. <clears throat> Gonna try. Oh my god, my. MacBook is really steaming up like crazy, but okay, before it explodes, I'm just gonna quickly explain this. Yeah, here, just go like either 180 
all 200%. And uh, yeah, there you go. You now have Gen 5 uh, in Final Cut Pro. That is how you would do it before uh, the 7.3 update. Oh, there you go. Yes, here's the clip that I color graded in Resolve. See? With all the information just baked in. Yeah, you. that, that is how you access Blackmagic RAW in Final Cut Pro. Uh, but yes, you lose all your um, like ISO and white balance tools and whatever. But even still, ProRes is a pretty beefy codec. You can push it to its, its extremes. Like as you can see here, you know, without all the weird banding and whatever. Oh wait, sorry, that's not ProRes. This is DNxHR. Ah, well, same thing. <laughs> not really. Yeah, it's yeah, Avid and Apple. I prefer ProRes because that's just, uh, because I've been using Apple since 2012, so. Yeah, but you know, they're both intermediate codecs. I love them both. Back to the other version of me. So that's my long roundabout answer to the question, how do you edit B-roll videos in Final Cut Pro? Um, you can access them in the sense that uh, you export, the, you transcode them into the ProRes files, which yes, Final Cut Pro can support because it's from Apple. Like if you're in a situation like me where you know you have like an old MacBook Pro, like this uh, 2015 MacBook Pro, uh, where DaVinci just doesn't work on it at all, um, yeah, then at least just bring like the all the B-roll files into DaVinci Resolve first, like free or the paid version, whatever, they both work. Um, yes, the, the playback will be laggy, but you can still just like dra click and drag all the video files onto the timeline and then go export individual clips and whatever. But and yeah, you will, you will have your ProRes uh, files in the Gen 5 flat log look. Again, this is not the most ideal sort of workflow, but it works. If it works, it works. As they say in engineering, if it you know sounds stupid, but it works, then it's not stupid. Or whatever the phrase is, I don't know, I'm not an engineer. Thanks for watching this clickbaity tutorial video. Uh, it's, it's r slash technically the truth, uh, I guess you could say. Um, if you like this video, then thumbs up. If you, liked it, if you disliked the video, then thumbs down. And let me know in the comments too what you disliked about it as well. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good one, all right? Um, it's starting to get cold here in Sydney, as opposed to in America, where it's, uh, I think, approaching summer. Yeah, anyways, yeah, keep on procrastinating, uh, however much you can, because it's during the month of May and April and stuff, which, yeah, there's not much <laughs> happening in the world in terms of, well, for me personally, it's like, it's the dry spell of gaming for me, where nothing's out right now, nothing new is out right now, and uh, yeah, it's like the, the cold spell before E3, so. I'm kind of bored right now. I just want that new Zelda game. That's if I'm being totally honest with you. <laughs> All right, see ya. <laughs> that went on to a weird rant. Oh, wow, I felt every bone in my body just crack like, oh. Arthritis. Hmm.